Many people will think because they don't know what they want to do, that they're stuck. People will feel confronted by the word passion. They'll look at somebody else and say, well, I don't know exactly what that thing is for me. Instead, give yourself permission to explore, what are you curious about? If you take the obligation of what you're going to get out of your curiosity away and you actually just start with how do you want to feel? Because how you want to feel and what you want to do and your legacy and the impact that you're able to make in the world, it all starts from something. And if you start with how you want to feel, it gives you permission to explore your curiosity. And when you explore your curiosity, it almost always leads you to your passion. When I was 20 years old, I was a complete misfit and I was trying to figure out what am I gonna do with the rest of my life. I dabbled in special effect makeup and writing and painting and drawing. And by all accounts, that was my identity. But every time I tried to find something that maybe would be a career, it just felt more and more out of place. One day I'm sitting on a couch next to my friend, Steve, who happened to be a firefighter. And he's telling me these stories about like, amazing fires and dramatic rescues. And I remember saying to him like, dude, that's your job. I would hang off his every word. And what happened was I kept showing up week after week and month after month. And eventually his stories turned to lessons. He turns to me and he says, Shelly, why don't you just apply? But at the time I am 108 pounds. I'm five foot nothing. I have no relatable skills, knowledge, experience. And so I said to him, Steve, that's ridiculous. Like, look at me. I'm not big enough, brave enough, smart enough, strong enough. And there's no girls in firefighting. And without missing a beat, he turned to me and he said, there's going to be a girl one day. Why wouldn't it be you? And that night I'm lying in bed and I'm looking up at my white stippled ceiling. And I said three words that changed the rest of my life. And those words were, why not me? So I call up the local university where they host the firefighter physical and I pay my money to try it out. I got my butt handed to me, but worse than that, when I walked out the door, I left my dignity behind because it was the first time I felt that passion for something that I felt might be my thing. So I go home and I spend the, the next two days wallowing in self-pity. But on the third day, something changed. On the third day, I got pissed off and I called the local university back and I said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to need the specs for that entire physical. I need to know heights, weights, distances for everything. And then I built it in my backyard and I failed at that physical day after day after day. And over the ensuing 1,162 days, I built my body up so it was able to handle the challenges it was going to have to endure. I learned everything there was to know about building construction and fire science and rescue. And on the 1,163rd day, my phone rang. And the voice on the other end said, Shelly Varela, it's Deputy Chief Morden. And we'd like to welcome you aboard as our city's first female firefighter. I was hired with 14 amazing firefighters. But for those guys, their struggle was over. But for me, that's actually where my struggle began because I was entering a place where I wasn't necessarily the most welcome person. The district chief calls my name, Firefighter Varela to the district chief's office. And he says, uh, how you doing? I guess he'd heard that I'd been getting a bit of a hard time. I said, I'm good, Chief, thanks. And he says, Shelly, firefighters are like tools in a toolbox. You don't need eight hammers. Hear what I'm saying? I had no idea what he was saying. But a few shifts later, we get a call, and it was for a car on its roof in between east and westbound traffic. When we get there, the roof is crushed down and there's this woman and she's upside down and she's suspended from her seatbelt and she's pretty badly injured. So I look around the back of the car and I see this small void in the rear window. And I say to my captain, 
I think I can get in there. So I take off my helmet and I slither in. And with the help of the guys on the outside and me on the inside, we were able to package her, lower her down, and slide her out. And it turns out she had a broken neck. And in that moment, I realized what he meant. Because like firefighters, people are the same. Your gift is your adversity. And what makes you different is the thing that makes you amazing. People are gonna tell you why you can't do it or how are you gonna make money doing that or you don't have any of the skills to do it or you know, you're not physically inept to do that task. But it's important to remember that they are loving you through the filter of their own fear. So when you discover that thing that you wanna pursue, don't listen to the people who are saying, oh, you know, I don't get it or I don't understand it or that's probably not gonna happen for you. There's always a community of people that have similar values or beliefs. Hang on to them tight and don't let them go because those are the people that are gonna support you. As a firefighter, I see tragedy every day. I witness people that reach the end of their life when they shouldn't have, suddenly, tragically. But what happens to me when I see that is I have this hypersensitivity to time. And I see these amazing people who have these incredible gifts who are wasting their time because they think they have time. The truth is, we're all on the clock. And those dreams that you are hoping to execute on someday are sitting over there waiting, but the clock is ticking. True happiness, when you're living what's true for you, not what people say you should do, or not what you feel obligated to do, or not what society told you is expected of you when you're a little kid, but what's actually true for you. It's so important to, to tune into what your heart says, and we're trained and conditioned to not listen to that anymore. That sort of disconnect is the root of alcoholism, depression, anxiety, and more importantly, there's somebody out there that's sitting on like the cure to cancer. And right now they're wondering, well, I don't think I could get into med school or what are the odds that, you know, I'm gonna be able to scrape together the cash to go or what if somebody's gonna be the next Picasso and their fourth grade teacher told them that they didn't have enough talent to paint. Like as a society, we need these people to step into their truth and step into their greatness because when they do, we all benefit. I was once a 108 pound misfit with no relatable skills, knowledge, or experience to become a firefighter. I first led with possibility. I allowed myself to feel what that phone call was gonna feel like. And 1,163 days later, I get the phone call. What's even better though, now 25 years later, I'm a fire captain and I get to lead my own crew. What's even better than that is I was able to found a junior female firefighter boot camp to teach teen girls about firefighting and possibility. My name is Shelly Varela and I am a possibility warrior. <laughs> <laughs>